This video includes setup, shooting and editing tips to help you get started, so let's get straight to it. The case on the 1 inch 360 camera is designed to slide off, but it's not very well designed and you just end up pulling the lens off accidentally. And it can also catch on the door if you leave it open. If you're not filming in the rain or near water, then remove the door and just keep it in a safe place. And the best way to assemble the camera is to build it in the case with the battery and the core. And this way, these two parts are safely together and then you just add the lens afterwards. To disassemble the camera, remove the lens and then slide out the camera core and battery. The lens is really vulnerable, so when not in use, always keep the lens cap on and never lay the camera down onto the lens. Leave the lens cap on when attaching the lens as well to avoid putting your fingerprints all over the lens. And always have a lens cloth on you because any mark or smudge on your lens will affect your final photo or video image. And if you want to leave your camera stood up while you're going through the menu, then put it on a mini tripod to prevent it falling over. Use the memory card speed suggested by Insta360. Don't try and save a few quid by getting a slower card and a cheaper brand. I only ever use SanDisk Extreme Pro cards. And unless you intend to shoot really long clips, I wouldn't buy one terabyte or even 512 gigabyte cards. Swipe down from the top of the screen and swipe from right to left and click on the cog icon for the settings menu. And here you can format your card. Scroll down to SD card and select format. You can also stop the screen from auto sleeping here. I usually put this on three minutes as it's really annoying when the screen turns off every 30 seconds. When the screen does sleep, you can bring it back to life by quick pushing the on off button on the side or tapping the screen. You can turn on the quick capture feature by swiping down from the top of the screen and select this icon. With quick capture, when the camera's off, you can then press record and the camera will turn on and start recording straight away. If you're recording a star lapse, then here you can also turn off the red record light by selecting this icon here. If you leave it on, the camera will see the flashing light and it will affect your final video. If you swipe right to left on the main screen, this is where you can make manual adjustments to your images. I suggest using the vivid color profile at first as this will give you punchy colors. It's a little less natural than standard, but if you don't want to make any adjustments to your images later, then select vivid. Log is a flat color profile which captures more information, but it's designed to be finished in the edit by adding what's called a LUT which is like a filter. So this option is definitely to be avoided by beginners. When shooting video, only ever select 6K. 6K refers to the entire 360 degree image. And when you reframe the image, you will lose image quality. So always start with the highest quality possible and avoid using the 4K and 3K options. To quickly change your shooting mode, you can swipe in the middle of the screen and it will bring up a carousel of icons and you simply switch your shooting mode by selecting one. You can access a quick shortcut favorites menu by selecting the bottom right hand corner of the screen here. And you can update each shortcut by selecting the arrow icon and it will then ask you if you want to save your current shooting parameters. If you select yes, then this will appear in either C1, C2, C3 or whichever one you've selected. While recording, you can select this icon to quickly switch between the lenses to see either the front or the rear facing lens. If you record something that you particularly like that you want to get to quickly when you edit, then you can select this icon here. Once you've selected the flag icon, now when you view this in the app, you'll see a yellow triangle on the timeline at the bottom so you can find it easily. The 360 image is made up of two images that are stitched together, one from each lens. This area around here is the stitch line, so if you cross this line and are too close to the camera, you will create distorted images with poor stitching. Keep back from the stitch line by at least 50 centimeters to avoid stitching errors. And generally, just try to avoid placing your main subject on the stitch line itself. This camera is heavier than most and will make an extended selfie stick bend, and you'll see it in your final videos around near your hand. But remember, it doesn't have to be all about you you can get some awesome shots with the extended selfie stick when it's reframed away from yourself. So experiment. Generally speaking, for most stuff that you'll shoot at first as a beginner, auto mode is actually pretty good. Low light filming, however, is the exception to this rule if you want to improve the quality of your images and avoid blur, grain and flicker. 
Auto mode doesn't know what you want to expose for, so it guesses and it tries to make everything brighter, resulting in noisy, grainy images. Every situation will be different, so you must use the app to monitor your images when shooting in low light. Lower the ISO down to around 400 to 800 max, and this will reduce the grain and make the darker parts of your images look cleaner. Avoid using low shutters like 1 30th or 1 50th of a second and change your shutter to 100th of a second or above which will help reduce camera blur when moving the camera. If you see flicker in your shots then changing the shutter speed to either one below or one above the current setting will usually resolve this. You can set a timer when taking photos by first selecting the camera icon and then tapping the setting at the bottom and choosing a 3 5, 10 or 15 second timer. If you're shooting in windy conditions then you can use the wind reduction filter. So swipe down and then across to the cog icon. Then scroll down to audio mode and select wind reduction. Only use the wind reduction filter if it is windy because if it's left on and there is no wind then your audio will sound muffled. When editing in the app, if you want your videos to look as natural as possible and avoid super wide distorted fisheye horizons, then select the natural view here. You may notice in some videos that there's an Insta360 logo that appears in the bottom right hand corner of your shots and you can turn it off in the app. So select settings in the app and then deselect shot on watermark. When exporting your videos, always select custom and this will allow you to export at a higher bitrate and sometimes change to a higher resolution from 1080 to 1440. Using keyframes in the app to edit at first can be quite overwhelming, but there are two alternative methods that you can use that are much easier. When you go to edit your clip, you'll see this timeline at the bottom, and when you select the plus icon here, you'll have the option to select viewfinder mode, or you can select snap wizard here on your screen. Both of these save you having to input any keyframes. You simply move your phone around to adjust your shots, and it records it and inputs the keyframes automatically and it's the fastest and easiest way to edit shorter clips. You may want to shoot some action shots with this camera and if you do you'll want to watch this tips video next. My name's Rich, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.